Welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm Ashley Martella. Polls show that Americans are paying attention to and opposing in greater numbers the controversial mosque and cultural center proposed for construction just two blocks from ground zero. Critics say the site of the nation's worst terrorist attacks perpetrated by Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden is no place for a mosque. Joining us from outside Washington, D.C. with his views is Michael Scheuer. He once headed up the CIA's Osama bin Laden unit. He's also the anonymous author of the 2004 book, Imperial Hubris, Why the West is Losing the War on Terror. Welcome to Newsmax again, Michael. Thank you very much, sir. Let's start with the mosque project. Do you think it should be built? And if it were built, what message would it send? Well, I, you know, it's hard to deny somebody the ability to build a religious structure, but it doesn't have to be built there. And I'm not in the minds of the folks who are, who are building it, but I would say very, very much, it will be very much the case that if the mosque is built on the site of our defeat on 9-11, it will certainly be viewed amongst those people who are sympathetic to Osama bin Laden and those Muslims who are anti-U.S. as a symbol of their victory. The whole idea that it's going to be a symbol of intra-faith dialogue, I think, is mistaken. You mentioned the word defeat, sir. Was that a defeat for the United States on 9-11? Oh, absolutely it was a defeat for the United States. We were caught flat-footed. Uh, we had not, uh, the previous administration had not uh, cared enough about defending America to have killed Osama bin Laden. And I, I think uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a place that will remind us that we are not invulnerable, much like Pearl Harbor. While some families of the victims say the location of the mosque desecrates the memories of their loved ones, New York City Mayor Bloomberg says not allowing the mosque undercuts the values and principles that so many heroes died protecting. In your opinion, which argument makes more sense? I think Bloomberg is just a windbag. Uh, you know, he's completely 100% pro-Israel. He has no interest in Muslims except in terms of their votes. So I think he's just a, uh, he's just a cipher. Uh, if he had any brains at all, he would have made sure that the zoning regulations were such that this controversy would not have uh, come up. Uh, my own view about the families of the 9-11 uh, victims is that the, the, the only real memorial to the people who died on 9-11 at the Pentagon or at uh, uh, Manhattan is, is an utter military victory over the people who attacked us. And I, if I was a victim's family, I would be much more worried about our government losing the war in Afghanistan and Iraq than I would be about this mosque. There's an audio tape circulating that's purportedly a 2005 recording of the Ground Zero Mosque Imam saying America may be worse than Al-Qaeda. What was your reaction to that, sir? Well, that's a, that's a pretty common view across the Islamic world. And it certainly draws into question what the motivation of the people behind this mosque uh, is. But again, that is a common view. 80% of the world's Muslims, according to the, to the Gallup poll that was conducted over seven years in 50 Muslim countries, 80% of Muslims worldwide regard U.S. foreign policy as an attack on Islam, which is the beginning of understanding why we have this war. So uh, it, it, it draws into question that imam's motivations, but it's certainly something that it doesn't hurt Americans to hear. Since you once led the group searching for Osama bin Laden, do you think he's still alive? And if so, are we any closer to catching him today? I, th you know, for my own view, sir, is uh, on the basis of every time we've had an audio tape from bin Laden, uh, the National Security Agency here in the United States has confirmed that it's his voice. They're very good at voice prints. I, I don't think there's any question that he's still alive. And in cultural terms, uh, if he had been killed, they would have, been, they would have announced it. Uh, they would have been both grieving for him, and in their culture, they would have been uh, rejoicing for him because he would have d died doing what he wanted to do, and that's fighting in God's name from his perspective. So I think on the whole, it's a mistake to, to even consider the idea that he may be dead. I think we have to operate on the assumption that he's alive and very dangerous to the United States. How close do you think Al-Qaeda terrorists are to getting a nuclear weapon? And if they get one, would they use it on U.S. soil? 
you know, I, I think it's a mugs game to say, are they close? Are they not close? The Soviet arsenal is still not fully controlled. The Pakistani nuclear industry, the civilian side of it, clearly is providing information uh, to Al Qaeda and other groups about nuclear weapons, nuclear technology capabilities. Uh, but the one thing you can be very sure of, I guess, is uh, they've been looking for a weapon since 1991, trying to buy one or make one. They have authorization to kill 10 million Americans, religious authorization, if they do find one. And if they do procure one or build one, there's no doubt they will use it. You have the Christmas Day airline bombing attempt and the failed Times Square bombing. What does that say about U.S. security today? It says that, that at least at the local level it, and at the, at the federal level too, that our local police forces are just completely overwhelmed by the number of people who are in the United States that they don't know anything about. Um, they, we have 12 million undocumented people in the United States and uh, we've done nothing to control the border or the entry of undocumented people since 9-11 which is really a national defense issue. It's not an issue of race or discrimination. It's a, it's, a, it's a matter of giving the police at the local and state level a chance to stop the next attack. And so far, um, we've done nothing to assist them. You were very strongly opposed to the decision to send U.S. troops into Iraq. Now Americans are withdrawing. Looking at the whole picture, has anything positive been accomplished there? Uh, not from my perspective, sir. We invaded a Muslim country without any real provocation or need. And once that mistake was made, we didn't win a victory. We kind of got ourselves the, the, the worst of both worlds. No matter how we dress up the evacuation or the withdrawal from Iraq, it's going to be perceived in the Muslim world as the second superpower being defeated. Is the Obama administration handling its operations in Afghanistan correctly? No, so they're, they're, but neither did Mr. Bush. There, there were both, the only mission we had in Afghanistan, sir, that was possible to accomplish was about 15 months of a punitive expedition after 9-11 to kill as much of Al-Qaeda, as much of the Taliban as we could, destroy their infrastructure, and then leave with the full knowledge that we might have to do it again another time. We're now going about to enter the 10th year of that war. It's very clear that there's not enough American troops on the ground, no matter what Mr. Obama has put in. And it's even more clear that the Afghans don't want what we have to offer. Senator John Kerry, chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, says very active efforts are underway to negotiate a political settlement with the Taliban. What do you say to that? Senator Kerry's out there to try to arrange a surrender. We don't know what we want. We know, though, that Karzai can't survive without us. I think the Taliban, uh, people say, what do the Taliban want? It's a very easy thing. The Taliban want power. I'm convinced, uh, for example, that they will negotiate some kind of an arrangement that gets us out of their country. And as soon as we're gone, they'll murder Karzai and the rest of his relatives if they choose to stay around. And what we'll have again is what we had in 2001, which is a, a Islamic, uh, a, um, uh, an Islamic emirate in Afghanistan. And finally, there's speculation that Israel may attack Iran's nuclear reactors at some point. If it does, what would happen in the region and would the U.S. be drawn into it? Without question, if the Israelis attack Iran, the Americans will be held responsible for it, whether we are or not. Uh, what will happen? There's a tremendous divide between Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims, but I think an attack by Israel, because it will be identified as an attack by the United States, will surely uh, unite, at least temporarily, the two sects, and we will have 1.4 billion enemies. In addition, because the federal government over the past 20 years has been absolutely derelict in controlling our borders and controlling immigration, the Iranians have a very sophisticated terrorist infrastructure in the United States, in Mexico, and in Canada. And though they would never use it as an offensive first strike weapon, if, we, if the Israelis attack uh, Iran, they will surely respond with terrorism in our own country here in North America. It's something that the politicians don't talk very much about, 
But I think between Hezbollah and the Iranian security services, we would have a heck of a time here in North America. Michael Scheuer, thank you so much for your insight and perspective. We really appreciate it. Pleasure, sir. Thank you. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.